Hey, this is Ramon, channel us up for that's designation of 4 IV, and welcome to my channel. Um, here's the deal because I got a debate, because I got debate prep going on, and I am currently finishing up my topics. I do not have the time to do the research for my normal Bible study videos, so this will count as a Bible study video. But we're gonna do something a little special here. The fact that I'm a student of philosophy and that I'm a lover of wisdom and a seeker of truth. And, to be honest, as part of my very lethargic crusade against bad preaching and bad apologetics, uh, I thought I would go after prosperity teaching today. So, I'm going to be reading out of the Bible, three different Bibles, and I'm going to be reading the Bible's condemnation of what we nowadays call prosperity teaching. So, hope you enjoy. Hope this goes well. First, we're going to go, we're going to go from three different Bibles. First, we're going to go with Matthew chapter 23, verses 1 through 33. And we are going to be going out of the NAB for this one. And Jesus spoke to the crowds and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees have taken their seat on the chair of Moses. Therefore, do and observe all things, whatever they tell you, but do not follow their example. For they preach, but they do not practice. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to carry, and lay them on people's shoulders, but they will not lift a finger to move them. All their works are performed to be seen. They widen their phylacteries and lengthen their tassels. They love places of honor at banquets, seats of honor in synagogues, greetings in marketplaces, and the salutation rabbi. As for you, do not be called rabbi. You have but one teacher, and you are all brothers. Call no one on earth your father. You have but one father in heaven. Do not be called master. You have but one master, the Messiah. The greatest among you must be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, but whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You lock the kingdom of heaven before human beings. You do not enter yourselves, nor do you allow entrance to those trying to enter. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You traverse sea and land to make one convert, and when that happens, you make him a child of Gehenna, twice as much as yourselves. Woe to you, blind guides, who say, if one swears by the temple, it means nothing. But if one swears by the gold of the temple, one is obligated. Blind fools, which is greater? The gold or the temple that made the goat sacred. And you say, if one swears by the altar, it means nothing. But if one swears by the gifts on the altar, one is obligated. You blind ones, which is greater, the gift or the altar that makes the gift sacred? One who swears by the altar swears by it and all that is upon it. One who swears by the temple swears by it, and by him who dwells in it. One who swears by heaven swears by the throne of God, and by him who is seated on it. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You pay teeths of mint and dill and cumin, and have neglected the weightier things of the law, judgment and mercy, and fidelity. But 
These you should have done without neglecting the others, blind guides who strain out the gnat and swallow the camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You cleanse the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside they are full of plunder and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, cleanse first the inside of the cup so that the outside also may be clean. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You are like whitewashed tombs, which appear beautiful on the outside, but inside are full of dead men's bones and every kind of filth. Even so, on the outside you appear righteous, but inside you are filled with hypocrisy and evil doing. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You build the tombs of the prophets and adorn the memorials of the righteous and you say if we had lived in those days in the days of our ancestors we would not have joined them in shedding the prophet's blood thus you bear witness against yourselves that you are the children of those who murdered the prophets now fill up what your ancestors measured out. You serpents, you brood of vipers, how can you flee from the judgment of Gehenna? That's Matthew uh, 1 through 33. That was from the NAB. Now let's try Mark 12, 30 through, 38 through 40. As Jesus taught, he said, Beware of the scribes, who like to walk around in long robes and be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. All right, and that was from the NRSV. Now, Let's try from the CTS. This will be Luke 11. And this is going to be 37 to 51. Ooh, this is tiny. Okay. Jesus had just finished speaking when a Pharisee invited him to dine at his house. He went in and sat down at the table. The Pharisee saw this and was surprised that he had not first washed before the meal. But the Lord said to him, O oh, you Pharisees, you clean the outside of the cup and plate, while inside yourselves you are filled with extortion and wickedness. Fools, did not he who made the outside make the inside too? Instead, give alms from what you have and then indeed everything will be clean for you. But alas, for you Pharisees, you who pay your teeth of mint and rue and all sorts of garden herbs and overlook justice and the love of God, these you should have practiced without leaving the others undone. Alas for you Pharisees, who like taking the seats of honor in the synagogues and being greeted obsequiously in the market squares. Alas for you, because you are like the unmarked tombs that men walk on without knowing it. That was Luke 37 through 44. Let's go to Luke 20, 46. While all the people were listening, Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of the scribes who like to walk about in long robes and love to be greeted obsequiously in the market squares, to take the front seats in the synagogues 
and the places of honor at banquets, who swallow the property of widows while making a show of lengthy prayers, the more severe will be the sentence they receive. Those are three different readings from three different Gospels. We have the condemnation of the prosperity gospel and of those preachers who ask for money and for places of honor and for Lear jets and for sports cars and mega churches and for fancy clothes. That is not what you're there for. You're not there for reputation. You're not there for popularity. You're not there to get money from the widow and from the poor person. You're there to give your money to the widow and the poor person. You're there to give from your abundance to the poor. All the more so if you don't have much to give what little you do have to those who are poorer than you. The prosperity gospel and the evangelist are not preaching the gospel. They are preaching money. They are preaching of mammon. They're not preaching of the gospel. And the gospel warns you three times to beware of these people. So beware. Peace, like, and subscribe. Uh, comment down below. I hope you enjoyed. This won't be a regular thing. Um, coming up to the end of Genesis, I should be done next month with Genesis. I'm going to move on to a new book. Uh, and I will probably be putting out, uh, once the debate is over, I'll be putting up more uh, readings from the Quran because I'm going to try to finish the Quran. I might be doing two or three uh, videos of the Quran a week in the future. I don't know yet. I haven't decided. But I am currently right now dealing with uh, shadow banning and uh, algorithm issues. So it's a thing, man. You got to deal with it, you're, especially if you're talking about, you know, stuff that's a little controversial. I hope you enjoyed. Comment down below.